Hello makers! So welcome back to another Idea Maker video. Today, uh, after we've set up the printer profile in the last episode or the first episode, uh, today we'll be creating a filament profile. Now we're not going to fine tune everything today, of course, because it takes quite a while to do that. But I'm going to show you guys how to create a filament profile. And most importantly, I'm going to give you some hints and tips on how to set up a profile when it's either about an extruder setup or a direct extruder setup. So stick around. Now there's always debates going on online on whether the best setup is Bowden or Direct. Some say Bowden is much faster and therefore can print quicker, while Direct is a bit more precise because you have a less length from the extruder to the hot end when it comes to the filament path. Well, it's all relative to how your filament profile is dialed in. But anyway, today we're going to set up this filament profile on Idea Maker just to get you up and running. Um, we'll do a test print and then in the following episodes, what we're going to do is start finding tuning these settings. Now if you guys like these tips and tricks make sure to follow Idea Maker on Twitter and Facebook because they tend to update posts with all these awesome tips and tricks which you guys can use. So for now we're gonna head to the PC, open up Idea Maker and start creating a profile. Okay so first things first what we're going to do is open Idea Maker and throw in um, any random model. I use this cylinder here because well it's very simple and it always gives you uh, a bit of information about what's wrong with the slicing profile. So what we're going to do today is just create a basic profile. We're not going to fine tune the profile. We're just going to look at some attributes which reflect that this is a Bowden setup and that it's also a PLA uh, filament that we're using. Once you click on start slicing, you'll notice that there are no profiles here. In fact, it won't let you slice because you need a template. Now, unfortunately, Idea Maker does not let you create a template from scratch. It's not necessarily a bad thing because as you'll see, you have so many options to look at, it might get confusing the first time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a profile based on another template. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to enter a name. We're going to call this uh, PLA 0 0.2 Ender 3v2. And we're going to copy the template from another um, template that we have. Now I have quite a few printers here, but everyone will have all these raised printers. So just click on the Pro 2 Plus, which is fine. Um, filament is a PLA 1.75. Um, you'll have an option, uh, all the options here to choose from. And then we'll also use a template like a basic uh, filament template, which in this case, a standard Pro 2 Plus VLA is fine. Once you click OK, you've created the template and essentially you can already start printing by just clicking OK here and then slice. And if you preview it, you'll see that, you know, it sliced the model, but you don't know what speed it's printing at, the temperature it's printing at, you might not want that raft over there. So what we're going to do is go and start slicing again and we're going to edit. This will bring up the advanced settings and this can be a bit overwhelming because there is quite a lot to look at, but don't worry, we will eventually go through all of these settings to give you guys an idea exactly of uh, how you can fine tune your filament profile. But for today, once again, basic, basic data points. So the first things we're going to look at are the layer height, which is 0.2. That's fine by me. The number of shells, which is the number of perimeters. Now, usually if it's a very detailed model, I tend to put three um, if I want a bit more strength, but two is more than enough. For the first layer height, um, I tend to use three, uh, 0.3 millimeter layer height, just to give me enough meat to make sure that if my bed is not perfectly level, uh, I still have sort of enough filament um, which has extruded on the uh, on the build plate. For everything else, once again, not really important for the time being. Next, we're gonna to go to extruder. This is basically telling the printer that the extrusion width is 0.4 millimeter, exactly the size of the orifice of the nozzle. Now, in my case, I tend to do that a bit bigger, 0.45 millimeter. And the reason is because I feel, and this is my personal opinion, of course, 
that when you squish the edges a little bit of the filament, you tend to get a bit of better quality on the print. But once again, you can do that any amount over 0.4, for example, and then just work your way from there. Retraction. Now this, this is important because we are using a bound in extruder instead of a direct. And there's, this is where the first, one of the first differences come in. Um, what we're going to look at is the retraction material amount. And that is the amount of retraction we're going to perform um, when it stops in a layer, for example, or it wants to move to another place. Retraction is the amount of filament it will retract or pull back from the nozzle while it moves so it doesn't ooze. Now, for a direct extruder, I usually tend to use between 1 to 1.2 millimeter of, extrusion, uh, of retraction. In case of Bowden, it all varies, but I usually start off with five millimeter extrusion uh, or retraction, sorry, once again, um, and then wake my way, work my way from there. Uh, it all depends on how much oozing I have during the print, but I need a set point to start with and five is usually the sweet spot. From here, the next thing I want to look at is the coasting distance. Now the coasting distance tells the printer to stop extruding even before it stops printing because especially when it's about in setup, you have a bit of pressure in the PTFE tube of the, um, of the Bowden extruder. Um, so filament tends to ooze a bit. This tells the printer to stop printing just a little bit before it stops uh, printing the line. In my case, once again, I start off with a 0.2 millimeter coasting distance and then might work my way from there. Wiping is also something I'm gonna leave out completely for now. We're gonna go to infill. This you can leave a standard because it all depends on what you're printing. For now, we're gonna leave it as it is. Solid fill refer refers to um, the top and bottom layers. One, one awesome thing about Idea Maker is the fact that it has different settings for top and layer bottoms um, from the rest of the print, but not just speed, pretty much everything you can think of. So for this, for now, all we're going to look at is the amount of top and bottom layers, which in my case, four top and three bottom layers for this test piece are more than enough. Next, you have supports. In this case, we will not be using supports. Platform edition. Now, we saw that there was a raft um, in the preview. We don't want that, or at least I don't want that. I usually use a skirt only. So I'm gonna change that to skirt and leave everything as it is. Cooling, we will be using PLA. Now on the Ender 3v2, the fan is not that strong. So we're just gonna leave it at 100% starting off from layer two. Temperature, once again, it depends on the filament. Um, we're gonna do PLA and we're gonna be printing about 50 millimeters a second. So. Uh, I believe 205 degrees Celsius should be enough. Uh, once again, we can change that as we go along, but for now, we just want to create a template. So 60 for the bed, 205 for the extruder should be fine. Speed, once again, we're gonna leave this at default, 50 millimeters a second for the default printed speed. I'm happy with that. The other thing you can look at down here um, is the slowdown for the first few layers. I usually turn this to one because all I want is to slow down for the base layer, everything else, prints normally. The advanced option here um, only has one thing you really want to look at, and that is the override filament settings. Now, filaments like PLA tend to expand when they heat up, like most filaments do. So this sort of compensates um, for that expansion. Now, in my case, I tend to start off at 95%, um, just, just as a starting point, and then I can work my way from there. Once again, this will be a full episode on its own because it's quite important to make sure that the, um, the, the lines that you're printing with the filament actually connect with each other and produce the right quality. When it comes to ooze, um, what I would suggest to start off with, uh, remove this wipe wall here because that's mainly for dual extruders. On the other tab, you have a few more things which we'll talk about at a later stage, but basically it has things like uh, gap fills and shells, repairing models, you can pause it at height um, if, uh, if you want to change the filament, for example, color during a mid print. It has uh, the bridging uh, menu here, which I did an episode on uh, a while back. You can check that in the link that's appearing now on the top right hand side. And finally, you have the G code. Now this is the start and end code. Uh, a lot of people will know what this is, but it's basically instructions to what the printer should be doing at the start and the end of the print, or before the start of the print and after the print has finished. In my case, what I tend to do is I use my own template. I will leave it in the video description. 
but basically the start code tells the printer to home all axes and then draw a purge line on the side just to purge the filament and start printing. The end code on the other hand even simpler and that is to turn off the extruder, the bed um, and just move the hot end away from the part so you can remove it safely and finally disable the motors and turn the fans. Uh, this is actually a start and NG code which I stole off filament frenzy um, quite a while back so thank you Tom. Now that that's done, I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna slice the model once again. I'm gonna preview it. And I can see that the raft is gone and everything looks fine. So what I'm gonna do is now uh, export this to local disk, um, which is saving it to um, a memory card, stick it in the Ender 3 V2 and start printing. And we can take it from there. And just like that, we have a test print. Now it printed and printed well, but there's so much going on here and there's so much to fix. Now, one of the advantages of being able to record the print and zoom in and see all the details is that it gives you the ability to pinpoint the things that you need to fix um, in your filament profile. Now, for example, the first couple of things that I noticed is that the outside perimeter is relatively slow. It could be a bit quicker. Um, I usually use half the speed for the outside perimeter, but this seemed a bit too slow for me. Now the info was printing at 80 millimeters a second and it printed it really well. So I know that the overall speed, which I use, which is 50 millimeters a second, could probably be bumped up to about 55 or 60 and it still produce a good quality print. Another thing you'll probably notice is that there is sort of like a little blob coming out whenever it's starting the perimeter. Now, two things are happening there. One, I need to remove the retraction between perimeters. So basically when it does a perimeter, it retracts and then starts the second perimeter. And that I tend to remove, I, I don't really need that. Uh, the second thing is that little blotch that comes out before it starts the perimeter. It should just move to a spot and start printing without actually having to extrude that little bit extra at the start. Now it looks, when you magnify it, it looks like a lot of amount. In reality, it's relatively small, but it makes a huge difference, especially in the seam and the start of the outside perimeter because you get these little artifacts which make it an inconsistent surface. Now that particular blotch that comes out is an extra start distance distance or an extra start amount in Idea Maker. And we'll get into that uh, much more in detail in the next episode. But to give you an idea, what's happening is that the filament is being retracted five millimeters. It moves to a place, detracts that five millimeters back. But what happens is that there was still a little bit of plastic in the nozzle, which was heating up and expanding. And when it pushes back those five millimeters, that little bit of extra filament always comes out. So what you do is you set an extra start amount of let's say minus 0.20 millimeters. Um, so it doesn't detract or re-extrude those five millimeters of the retraction in full amount, just a little bit less so you avoid that blotch. But we'll get back into that in the next episode. Then there's also the flow rate, which we need to fix. I said that I believe at about 95%. So having that a little bit more will definitely help because as you can see, the top layer has a few microscopic gaps in between and that needs to be fixed. So that is it for the second episode for uh, filament profile tuning. Now it starts to get interesting because now we have the basis of our filament profile and next it's starting to dial in. Um, and we start dialing in the retractions, the extra start amount, as I mentioned. We'll also do the flow rate and it'll get interesting. And hopefully with 
the with this series you'll be able to start up using your idea maker profile in the best way possible and also don't forget that there's ideamaker.io which is a website containing all the uh, profiles which are uploaded by the community including myself there it just makes it easier to have a repository for all these filament profiles um, so yeah make sure you check that out just in case your printer is there and you don't have to fiddle around with your uh, filament profile that is it for me guys thank you very much for watching i want to thank my awesome patrons for uh being there um by rock my support to be able to continue with this channel uh if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below make sure you like share subscribe and as always happy making guys mm -hmm.